So thinking about a homestead built in a day. Just pausing a moment to think about that. Whether we want to homestead because of all the craziness that has happened recently and you saw stores out of stock of food or whether it's because you just want to live more self-sufficiently to know that you can, to know that you're capable of it, to know that you don't have to rely on Big Brother, um, whatever it may be, it's really hard to be patient. Wait, where's your cover? So here I, I have... I cover? You want the cover? Okay, here. Here I have some butternut squash we harvested. And I did not think they were ready because I did the whole nail test. My nail doesn't really go in. I have to press really hard to get like that. And I have really strong nails. So I just wanted to show you guys. I have a few different ones here. You can see they're kind of different shades. These are a little lighter. These are a little darker. And these we already peeled. And we're noticing that they're kind of going bad a little in the center. So we're going to scrape that out. But I thought that these weren't going to be ripe here like these lighter ones. So I went ahead and cut open this. This was a darker one. And look at that ring. We're going to have to scrape out extra. Barely any of that's going to be good. And then this one, there's a good amount. But still some of that's bad in the center. We're going to have to scrape out. You can see that's a little darker than this one. And these, this one's a little darker too. Let's see what this is. way darker. I'll have to cut that one. But this is a lighter one. These two are lighter. Look. It still has some bad parts to it there that we're going to have to scrape out. This is and that wet. one. So I'm about to go out and harvest all of those butternut squash out there. Because my little nail test that I saw people doing oh almost dropped them off need a bigger cutting board um i don't i don't trust the nail test anymore guys i don't trust it because these are overripe a little bit i can still salv salvage some of it but i wanted to share this with y'all don't go by that nail test um i think i'm gonna treat it like the tomatoes once it's been there about as long as like once it stops growing in size like pretty much see how long it takes to get to its size if it took a few weeks to get to that size and it stopped growing then give it a few weeks and then harvest it that's kind of what you do with tomatoes so i'm going to test that with these butternut squash so look at that after i scraped them out they look great i will be able to use all of this um, I'm going to cook some of this with dinner, with some potatoes and onions and eggs. And then I'm also going to save some to steam tomorrow for our little guy that just started eating. Um, and also, bonus, look at all of these seeds I get to save. Obviously not that because I cut into those. But all this, and I've already saved a little bit. I'm just going to put them all out on a paper towel, let them dry for a couple weeks, and save them. Um, also, really good tip on how to cut butternut squash. Cut off, like, if this was the butternut squash, cut off the ends, and then set it on its big side on the bottom, and cut down the half. And that makes it really easy to then just spoon out the center area here and then I peel the outsides almost forgot to show you guys check out that guy see that gotta love vinegar soaks whenever you bring your veggies in soak them in some vinegar and all those little worm guys will come on out. I think this is actually one of the uh, vine borers. See that? It 
it's starting to eat up the plant, but we still got lots of harvest. All right, so it's kind of hard to see at the nighttime, and I don't want to mess with their lighting, but we got some more baby chicks. <laughs> um, we got four more. So now we have a total of 14 baby chicks. Um, we have two sapphire gray chicks. They're like a really light gray, beautiful color. They'll be like a really pretty gray bird. One's right there sleeping. Other one's huddled over there. It's that one. And then we also got two um, silver laced Wyandotes. And that's really exciting because they're really pretty. And that darker one, <clears throat> that darker one is one right there. And then other one is awkwardly sleeping there. <laughs> Look at that. That's too funny. The way chicks fall asleep, they just slowly fall down. That's really funny. So yeah, those are our new additions. And I'll take a better a better video in the morning so we can see them better but it is Monday now and this is the new edition over here our um, original I guess our first chicks we got um, they the Polish hens have still been kind of feisty. I don't know if it's because they're roosters or what. I have heard from one person that they are a little feisty, but I've also heard that they're docile, so I don't know. But they're still struggling with being feisty. It's like one or two of them. And then one of the buff Orpingtons seems to have a little bit of less feathers. And I don't know if that's normal, but I'm keeping an eye on it. But these ones are going on their second week of life. And then our ones we got today and yesterday are on their first week. So we have pretty much one week olds and two week olds. And right now we have six in here and we have eight in here. And we only plan on getting like two more birds. I think I want a couple of Americanas still. And we'll figure out to make sure that they're comfortable. But as far as in here, we think one of the reasons we looked up like why the birds could be getting feisty and one of the reasons was heat. And so we uh, have this little contraption here. It's actually a baby gate <laughs> and you can lock it into place and he, my husband actually like tied it also with some like metal wire there and then clipped the lamps on the top so we can actually raise it. So we've raised it a little bit higher um, and we did check with the thermometer actually even though we were advised like don't stress about it. We just wanted to check to get an idea and it's about 88 to... 90 degrees in here so hopefully that's good for them one has been hiding we put a mirror in there also because we heard that like if they're pecking the eyes it could be because it's shiny and they're obsessed with it so a mirror could help and I haven't noticed I'm really paying attention to it but one keeps laying behind it I don't know if that's because it's trying to cool down or hide but I'm kind of keeping an eye on that too so, I thought the lighting would look better since it's daytime, but it's super cloudy out. So, it doesn't look much better. But this is morning, and that. Let's see. Those two right there are the gray ones. Those are the sapphire grays, those two. 
and then oh nice the other two are by each other also those two darker ones that the yellow one just pushed over those are the silver laced lion oats oh it's moving fast look at that those are gonna be beautiful they're big yeah they're kind of big but these ones are actually only a few days old so these are like three days to a week in here and then over in here these are all a week going on two weeks they're calming down a little bit but still a little feisty I'd say one or two of the Polish hens have been a little feisty still and I don't know if I said before but we have this chicken wire on here too it's working really well and we've even occasionally put that piece of wood just over the side just to give them some more shaded area <laughs> We happen to live in a time that wants everything just fast, fast, fast. And I thought it would be good to evaluate why do we want everything so fast? Is it because instant gratification is the best form of gratification? Or is it possibly the delayed gratification that could be the best form of gratification. I think that it's pretty safe to say that the best things in life don't come easy. But I also think it's safe to say that the best things in life don't come quickly. We have been very blessed to build all that we have in the past 10 months that we have been living on our homesteading journey, getting our first place and having some land to do the things that we want to do. We have definitely realized that it does take time, money, even skills to accomplish building a homestead. And that's really just to name a few. I still find myself quite often, honestly, more often than I'd like to even admit, wanting things to be done right away. Wanting that instant gratification, wanting the whole homestead to be built in a day. And then I remember patience. I remember how much we're blessed with and how we can barely handle the blessings that we currently have. Could we really handle such a blessing that would mean having all of the homestead done in one day if we could barely even handle it now? And would it really be such a blessing if it were all built just in one day if something that we've planned for dreamt about saved money for if it could just be accomplished at the snap of your fingers would it really be such a blessing would it really be so gratifying honestly the reality is that no homestead was built in just a day. I'm glad that's the case. Are you glad that the best things in life are a little hard? 
or maybe even really hard.